Welcome to Christ Life Ministries for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for edifying the body of Christ. Ephesians 4.12 A work of faith, a work of love, a work of perfection unto a glorious church. very important message for today that the Lord has given me. I had something else. Uh, well, there are other things that have been downloaded to me down through the months, I've told you. But in the course of this week, the Lord brought this to me and he said, I want you to go and teach on this because the understanding of it is not as clear as it should be. And I've Entirely understanding spiritual forces. Many Christians are unaware of the reality of the spiritual forces that are working in our lives, in our circumstances, in our bodies, and causing the things that are happening to happen. As I was praying earlier this morning, the Lord gave me this. It says, spiritual forces emanate from spiritual beings to create, to manipulate, and control all things, both spiritual and physical. I didn't read that in the book. I'm going to repeat it. Spiritual forces emanate from spiritual beings to create, to manipulate, and control all things both spiritual and physical. These three sets of spiritual beings release spiritual forces. The first one, of course, is God. God is a spirit. And everything we can see, touch, taste, and feel emanated from God when He spoke and He created, firstly, the spiritual world, then secondly, the physical world. So everything has a spiritual origin. And even the physical things that are happening are being manipulated and controlled and directed by spiritual forces. That's one of the greatest revelations you can get because when you understand it, you will now understand that prayer is not an option. And then you won't be praying lazily and lackadaisically if you have an understanding of what I'm sharing with you now. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to look at some very important scriptures. Hebrews chapter 1 is, 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 is the beginning. And I'm going to look at verse 3. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul, Hebrews was written by Paul. <laughs> People say the writer of Hebrews, not the writer of Hebrews, Paul. Jesus appeared to Kenneth Hagen, and when he was talking to him, he just said, Paul said in Hebrews. He didn't even argue with the theology. You know, of course it's Paul. Who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, Everybody, I want you to say these words after me. And upholding a few things by the word of his power. Let's say it again. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Who by himself purged our sins. But that, that's the phrase I want to concentrate on. Everybody say, upholding all things by the word of of his power, everything, everything, everything is being upheld or sustained by the power of God through the spoken word, through his word that he spoke. For those of us who have done a little bit of physics and uh, astro 
astronomy, not astrology. Astrology is the devil's people. But astronomy is just a study of the stars and, and what we call the cosmos. We call it astrology. We also call it cosmology. We, 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 we are observing some things we don't understand. I, even though I'm, I'm not actively in academia anymore in the sense I'm not in the university, but I subscribe to academic papers. I get information of the latest things that are happening in every direction. This universe, I'm talking about the physical, uh, you know, the, the, the scientists have become humbled in the last uh, 20, 30, 40 years because of the things they are seeing. So they don't say the universe anymore. You know, they say there's the observable universe. They, they qualify it because they, they, have begin to, they are beginning to see that there's something beyond what we can even see. And what they've seen is that the galaxies are moving away at faster than the speed of light. There's, this is moving this direction, and in every is uh, is in, in physics we call it isotropic. In any direction you look, it doesn't matter where you put your telescope, whether it's optical or the ones we put into outer space, like the Hubble telescope. We we're getting images back. The thing is phew, 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 faster than the speed of light. The some of the galaxies are rotating. Because, they, they, you know, they're kind of like our galaxies, the Milky Way galaxy, you know, it, 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 it's, it's in a spiral form. It's rotating faster than the amount of mass that is inside. So they call it dark matter. This one that's going out, it, they, can't, they can't understand it. So they call it dark energy. Dark, not in the sense that it is dark. It just means that we, all our instruments and our optical and, and electromagnetic instruments cannot measure it. Well, all they need to do is open the Bible. You know what it says? The invisible things of him are clearly seen through the things that are made. It's invisible. That's why it's dark. He's telling you that there's something beyond the physical. Sometimes I'm not, this is scientific fact. Beyond the physical. They can't measure it. They can't touch it. But they know it's there. They can see its effect. Have you seen the wind? How many people have seen the wind before? But they can't see the wind. But you see its effect. When the wind blows, you see the trees go like this. And go like that. But you can't see the wind itself. You can hear it. The other day it was raining. You know, you see the effect. But the wind, in the actual wind itself, you cannot. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ likened to the spirit world. Talking about being born again. He said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. You can hear the sound and you can see the effect. But you don't know where it comes from and where it's going to. Give a lot of clap offering somebody. Christianity is reality. Science is finally catching up with the Bible. Correction, trying to catch up. They can never catch up. I'm so glad God saved me when he saved me. I was saved at the age of 20. By my 21st birthday, which was May 2nd, 1980, I'd been born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and I started walking in a significant amount of revelation knowledge. I wrote an article I yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me, you know, called The Hope of Our Calling. It's, it's on our website. I wrote it when I was 21 years old. I was in Imperial College. I said all of that, I said that to say this. Because I took a, I had an insight into revelation knowledge, I saw that there is knowledge beyond the physical. Physical knowledge is good. Physics, engineering is good. But it's not everything. There's superior knowledge. And now we're seeing the evidence of it. The, the, the galaxies, they're all moving far. Watch this. Inside the galaxies, inside the physical something, you cannot move beyond the speed of light. That is between me and you now. You know, 
I cannot send information at faster than the speed of light. Because we're limited to this physical realm. But we now know that the galaxies are moving and the speed which they're moving, it keeps increasing. Nobody can understand that. It's, it doesn't break Einstein's law, you know, of, of, of not be going because the speed of light is restricted to the physical realm. We're dealing with a great God. Give the Lord a clap offering, somebody. Spiritual forces. Hebrews 11.3. Hebrews 11.3. These will be my favorite scriptures. Many, many years ago when I first started teaching on faith, everywhere I went, I, University of Ibadan, University of Ilori, University of Ife, they used to invite me everywhere by the grace and the mercy of God. You know, and I would preach and teach this. And people would just, you know, they'd just be looking because they, down here, people had heard, hardly heard anything like that. You know, we're dealing with forces, tangible forces. It's just that they're invisible. But they're not less real than the force you feel or that, or that you observe in the physical realm. I'm going to give you an illustration in a minute. But let, let's read Hebrews 11, 3 first. Oh my goodness, glory be to God. I'm going to read it in the King James and I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. And maybe one or two other translations as the Lord leads me. Now, let's first of all read in King James. Jesus is Lord. Say, through faith. Oh, I didn't hear you. You're not, you're, not, you're not talking like enthusiastic people. Through faith, we understand. How do we understand it? Through faith. The scientists are now coming to understand it through observation. But 2,000 years ago, a man called Paul, who had revelation... Say, through faith. Oh, Kashel, I'm excited, folks. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are, are made were not made of things which do appear. Let me read the Amplified. By faith, we understand, glory to God, that the worlds during the successive sages. That's another message for another day. I preached that some years ago on God, science, and creation. There are three eons of time. The time when God, first of all, created the Bible. Go to Genesis 1. It says, "God in the beginning, God. I was saying, in the beginning, God. I didn't hear you. Created the heavens and the earth. Full stop. How long that took, nobody knows. Then the earth became without form and void. Stop again. That's another eon. What made it become without form and void? Satan rebellion. We know that from the other parts of the Bible. How long it took, we don't know. Then it stayed like that. For another length of time. Successive ages. Then, after that long time, the Spirit and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Lalu, where did the deep come from? He hadn't made any water. We're still in verse 1 and 2. Water is not made until later on. It was made earlier. Give him a clap offering somebody. Where did the deep come from? It came from when it became form, uh, without form and void. When Satan's rebellion, this is not the Noah's own. Long before Noah was dreamt of. The Holy Ghost moved upon. The, 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 the place was in chaos. Upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. It's not the light of the sun. This is spiritual light. I would say spiritual and physical. Say it's spiritual and physical. You see, people don't read their Bible properly. And then they read without revelation. So they get all mixed up with and say science contradicts the Bible. No. Truth is constant. And God is truth. His word is truth. You don't find him making 
the sun and the moon and something visible until about day four. So which light is this one? Please. I, I joke like this with Pastor Wally sometimes. I say it is nice to think. I heard it from E.W. Kenyon. You know what he said? In one of his books, he said, the great majority of men do not think. And uh, being a pastor and a teacher, I taught in the university for some years, you know, I've come to see that. Most people do. They don't want to That's it in our language. They don't think. When you read it, you, you know, when you read the Bible, you read with respect. Yeah. Chapter, verse 1. Then verse 2. Then verse 3. Then verse 4. And let there be light. But it's not the light of our sun. The sun had not yet... I won't say it hadn't yet been made. It hadn't yet been allowed to appear on the earth. <laughs> you see, when he first made everything, sun, everything was there. Then when it became without form and void, because of Satan's rebellion and the flood and everything, all that thing in the heavens were blinded from the earth. So what God did he, from you, what we call the six day creation, or, you know, it's literally six days, but it wasn't that all those things were made in six days. They were already there. God just opened the um, um, atmosphere, so to speak, so that the light could shine. So the greater sun, light ruled by the day, and the lesser, they were there. So scientists now come to me, oh, the Bible is wrong, you know, the, the, the sun has been burning helium, you know, for billions and billions of years. Oh, sure. You didn't read your Bible properly. Of course it was burning. It's been there. He just removed the satanic mess so that the sun that had always been there could now shine back. Well, that's not my message today. Through faith! It was that Amplified Bible that triggered that. Blame the Amplified Bible, don't blame me. By faith, we understand that the worlds during the successive says, ages, that's why I brought that up, were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God so that what we see was not made of things which are visible. Give him another clap offering. So brethren, there is a visible world and there is an invisible world. And it is the invisible world that created and controls and directs the visible world. I'm going to get ahead, ahead of myself a little bit. When you pray, you are contacting the invisible world. When you speak, you are releasing invisible energy and power to begin to control the visible. Because the invisible is more powerful than the visible. It has to be. Because the visible was created by the invisible. Hold on, Joe. Yeah, well. Oh. Glory to God. Let me stay on message. Everything. Hey, ah, Brother Luby, you know, this was just a coincidence. There's no such thing. It was ordered from the invisible realm. Do you remember when Jesus said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I, uh, you know, and I accepted Jesus. You know, and I do. No, no, no. He chose you first. You just didn't know. Then he sent invisible forces and angels to begin to manipulate your circumstances to bring you around so that you will now understand that he chose you. Then you will now accept him as your savior. But it was not you who initiated the thing, it was him. Give him another clap offering. I got it, not that. I just got it. Honey, I just got a tweet. It 
was your futures that was formed in your mother's womb. But you came from God. You were sent from heaven into the futures in your mother's womb. That is why he said, before I formed you, Watch this. They haven't, you are, you are not born yet. Before I formed you, I knew you. The invisible is the one that creates the visible. I knew you. And I ordained you. You say, oh, I decided to become a prophet. No, you didn't. <laughs> I answered the call of God. Well, yes. But it was pre-programmed. <laughs> Before your parents knew each other. <laughs> Scripture. Levi gave tithes. When Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, the Bible says Levi was still in his father's loins. Therefore, the Melchizedek priesthood is superior to the Aaronic priesthood. I don't know if you're going home today. Don't worry, you go home. You go. Kochi <laughs> you don't understand it. Levi was not Abraham's son. We're looking three generations ahead. <laughs> but God already knew Levi. <laughs> You get to know God better, you begin to respect Him more. We don't respect God enough because we think He's like us. Before I knew you, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. So, Pastor Rhoda, He knew your grandmother, then your great grandmother, and your great great grandmother, and your great great grandfather. And then he looked down through the ages and said, I'm going to send the British to colonize Nigeria. And this grandmother will meet that grandfather and have this one. That grandfather will meet that one and have this one. And, that one have, and then they will have Ruda. And then I will send my angels. And my word and Rhoda will become my child. And the destiny I have for her, she will come to see it and fulfill it. Long before your parents knew anything about it. That's the God we're dealing with. Do you see why it's important to pray? I'm going to get to pray in a minute. But you see, folks, we're dealing with reality here. We're not dealing with a God who is careless. He knows what he's doing. Oh, hey, well, those ones that died in the womb and those ones that died as children, they're not lost, they're heaven. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Do you think people only grow on earth? When my wife and I first got married, we lost twins. They're not lost. They never. And one day when we get there, we're going to see them. So come down. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. It was nicer up here than down there. Don't let me go too far. Spiritual forces are like physical forces. 
No, you see, see, the only way you can understand a spiritual thing is if I give you a, a spiritual thing, is I give you a physical analog. The word analog means analogy. That's where we get it from. It means something that is like it. So that's what I'm going to do now. But before I do, I'm going to read another scripture. It's in Ephesians chapter 2. I'm not talking to anybody here. Ephesians, the second chapter. Glory be to God. And we're going to look at two verses. You know, I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible. So, wherein, in times past, ye walked. I didn't hear you. According to the course of this world. In the New Testament time, you see what just put lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. You will get a clearer revelation of what he's talking about. Everyone you see world in, in this context, you know, he's not talking about, you know, he's not talking about, you know, the, the, the planet Earth or, and, and the continents. He's talking about the world system. So just put lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And we're going to come back to that in a minute, you know. According to the course of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, we're talking the spiritual forces, that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom, I didn't hear you, we are also, also, we all, I would say all, <laughs> Had our conversation or manner of life or conduct in times past in the lusts of our flesh. It's confirming what I was telling you earlier. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath even as others. The people in the world don't understand it and sadly majority of Christians don't understand it. When you have a desire in your mind. Correction. When you have a thought in your mind and a corresponding desire in your body, it is a spiritual force in the air that is instigating the thought and the desire. 